Hey, this is Lloyd. Thanks a lot for joining me. I'm going to share with you some techniques that I use in Photoshop for retouching portraits. This is a portrait of model Caitlin Sullivan with the makeup done by Jennifer Ruth. And this is the image before any retouching has been done. So as you can see in this case, there's not a lot wrong with this image. There's beautiful light. The model is great. Her her skin is very, very smooth and the makeup is great too. There are a few minor things that need work on, so I'm going to show you that in this uh, video. Here's the after retouching image, and as you can see, it's just a little bit smoother, her skin. The light is slightly more contrast, and I've made changes around her eyes, as well as remove some stray hairs and so on. So I'll be going through uh, removing blemishes, smoothing the skin, removing stray hairs, and just generally fixing up the eyes and the lips so that the Im final image really is looking great. The first thing I'm going to do is starting from Lightroom is zoom in to full view 100% of the image and then uh, reduce the noise, go into develop and detail and in detail there's a really great noise reduction slider in, in Lightroom 3. So just move the slider across until any noise is gone. And also adjust the histogram to give the right level of shadows and highlights that you like. And then just right click on the image and go to edit in Photoshop CS4 and that will then load up Photoshop for you. Once in Photoshop, just make sure that I'm actually in Photoshop. Now press the letter F on your keyboard. Uh, the, all the controls that I'm talking about are on a Mac. Uh, most of them are very similar on Windows. Now uh, with that view, duplicate that layer, which I'm using Command J to do, and then rename that layer Retouch. Uh, go to Full Size, which is Command Option Zero. And you notice that there's some stray hair uh, that's kind of distracting and I'm just going to remove that using the patch tool. The patch tool uh, has a couple options. You can see at the toolbar at the top you can have source or destination. In this case I'm using source and you just select the hair that's uh, that you want to get rid of and then just drag that selection into a blank area that matches the background uh, where the hair is and then that way it gets rid of it but leaves the background looking uh, the way it should. Here you can see there's a couple strands of hair over Caitlin's eye and I'm using the patch tool again to just remove those strands of hair. So just select it and then drag it over and carefully drag it over and Photoshop will then uh, basically heal the background so that it matches the surroundings and does a very nice job. Okay, so I've cleaned up the hair around the eyes, and now I'm just going to enhance the eye a little bit. The first thing is to choose the Dodge tool and make sure the range is highlights. Exposure can be quite low, around 2%, and just go over that catch light, make it a little brighter. It's nice if the pupil is a pure dark black, so go to the Burn tool, choose Shadows, and a low exposure around 10%, just darken the, the pupil a little bit. And uh, sometimes the whites of the eyes has some redness to it, or maybe it's got a little uh, bit bloodshot. Just use the sponge tool, select desaturate, and then just go over the whites of the eyes. And that will then remove uh, any hint of redness from the eyes, brighten them up quite a bit. Uh, the next thing is, I noticed that just in the corner of her eye, it's a little bit shiny and it kind of distracting. So I'm going to use the paintbrush and press the Alt button or you can use the eyedropper to select that red area near that kind of white reflection and just cover it up a little bit on a low opacity here I'm at about eight percent just to bring it down it still looks natural but it doesn't distract from the eye which you really want to see very clearly okay and the next step is to brighten up the color part of the eye the iris and I've chosen the sponge tool in saturate mode now and then just going over that uh, color part of the eye to brighten it up a little bit and then go to the sharpen tool and just go over a little bit and that kind of adds a little bit more twinkle to the eye 
I'm going to repeat the same thing on the second eye. There's no hair in the way here, so that's not necessary to fix. The next step is just to remove some blemishes from the skin. Now, Caitlin has amazingly clean skin, but everybody, when you zoom in close, you'll see some imperfections. So to remove those, uh, here I'm using the Spot Healing Brush and just clicking on the little blemishes and imperfections. And Photoshop kind of recognizes the background and blends it right in. So it's completely gone and totally unnoticeable. When I get to a larger thing, such as that hair going across her forehead, uh, just like before with the eye, I'm going to use the patch tool and just select a little piece of the hair and just move it out of the way. And gradually I can get that hair out and that little distracting element is no longer there. So just moving along like this, and also you can remove blemishes the same way instead of the spot healing brush. And uh, it's amazing how Photoshop just blends that right in to the background. Now I'm just using the space bar and, and just moving myself around with the mouse around the picture and just removing a couple other blemishes the same way. And here I'm just going to touch up uh, the lipstick. During the photo shoot, sometimes uh, the makeup might get a little smudged or uh, especially on the lips, there's going to be a little bit of lipstick that comes off. And so I'm just pressing, I'm just using the brush tool and I selected the color using the Alt key or you can use the eyedropper. So the foreground color is close or matches that area where I'm going to brush over at a low opacity and a very soft brush and just enough to cover up any areas where the lipstick has cut, uh, kind of come off. And uh, I use a Wacom tablet which uh, with a pen which makes it very easy to just brush like this. It's a little trickier with a mouse. Uh, tablet is definitely the way to go with photoshopping. So just gradually covering up that part of the lips where the lipstick has come off like this. The next thing I'm going to do is some skin smoothing using the Gaussian Blur filter and the History Brush. That's just one way. There's many ways of doing this. So I've duplicated the retouch layer and called it Smooth Skin. And now I'm going to the filter menu, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and adjusting the radius. And that's something you just have to eyeball so it looks a little bit blurry like this. In my case, it's around 18 pixels. Then go to the History palette and back up one level and then click on the little box next to the Gaussian Blur state and choose the History Brush with an opacity of around 10%. 10% allows you to kind of brush on that blur without a huge dramatic change. So it's a very subtle look and in Caitlin's case her skin is already very smooth so I'm not going to need too much smoothing. If uh, someone has rougher skin, you can just uh, brush over more, more frequently or change the opacity to a little bit higher amount. If you want a very porcelain kind of look, then you could use even a higher opacity. But I like to keep the pores slightly visible so it has a natural texture like real skin. So I'll just finish brushing using the Wacom tablet and just slowly going over it, basically at 100% of the uh, the view at 100% of the image so I can see very clearly what I'm changing. Okay, I finished the skin smoothing and I'm just showing you before and after which isn't very dramatic because Caitlin's skin is already very smooth and I haven't done a huge amount of smoothing. I'm going to add a curves layer to increase the contrast a little bit. Again, this is a personal preference thing and what you think looks good. I'm just going to apply a slight S-curve adjustment to increase the contrast. So bringing up the highlights a little bit on her face and then just bringing the shadows down just a little bit to increase the contrast. And then I'll show you before and after for that. And that's just about it. The next step is just to save the file and uh, then bring it back into Lightroom.